This is my hidden home lab that runs my network, Wi-Fi, CCTV, smart home, and local storage. Not to forget the other side that runs the audio-visual distribution around the house, and this can actually save you money. We'll go over how much all this costs throughout the video. When we moved in here, I had no idea what to do with this space. It actually sits above the cellar. First, we installed a false wall to hide this space off from the actual main cinema that it resides in. And then we installed some flush mounted LED lighting to get rid of that dome light that we kept banging our head on. The strips themselves are individually addressable and are controlled via some software on an ESP called WLED. And you can run a whole host of effects if you want. We've already made a video about how to make these type of WLED strips. I'll put the link up there in the card and down in the description if you're interested. In total, all the LEDs cost about £82.50 to get working, which starts off our tally nicely. I had my friend Tom round to then sort out the god awful electrical job that we found when we moved into this house. We replaced all of that with some galvanized sockets. You do need some specific tools to put the threads on this galvanized conduit. Overall, these sockets are quite expensive for what they actually are, just sockets, but they do finish off the back wall really nicely. Now with the cosmetics out the way, let's turn to the main event and focus on both of these racks. These are both 16U racks from a company called Tech Mojo that I found on Amazon. They only come in black, so the network side was painted to match all of the ubiquity equipment, and it turned out really nicely. I've been a fan, as you guys know, of Ubiquiti for the longest time ever, so I'm so stoked to finally have a setup like this running the show. At the top, we've got the 24 port patch panel with dual keystone couplers filling those gaps and then 15 centimeter ether lighting cables to complete the look. Now, I do admit this is fairly steep for patching equipment, but if you've got an ether lighting switch, you have to finish it off with the right cables. Now the switch is the Promax 24 POE. Now this thing is an absolute beast. It's got four SFP Plus ports at 10G, which somehow I've almost run out of, and 24 RJ45 ports. And some of these run at 10G and some of them at 2.5G. The reason why this switch is so expensive is because of its 400 watt PoE budget. This basically means it can power up devices over the Ethernet cable run. Devices like wireless access points and CCTV cameras and other smart home accessories. It also has ether lighting, which is that really nice subtle glow you can see around all of the RJ45 boots. Yes, it does look great, but it can also be set up to tell you important information like what ports are running certain VLANs, for example. The switch is linked by 10G SFP to the UDM Pro Max, which sits below, the star of the show. This does all my routing, VLANs, network management, the gate access system. It records the CCTV with license plate recognition. It's genuinely a really powerful, beastly device that most anybody would be able to understand with a really simple graphic user interface. But we'll talk more about the CCTV and gate access systems and how all that's set up a little bit later in the video. Next up, local storage. Linked with 10G SFP into the network, we've got the UNAS Pro filled with 20 terabytes of SSD storage. This is a new release for Ubiquiti, but I've really enjoyed using it. We have a full review of this device up on the channel if you're interested. Using SSDs inside, we can safely use this as scratch disks when we're editing these YouTube videos. And it's also really handy to send Jed file links when he's working from home editing these videos. Say hi, Jess. Under that, the AI key, a new release from Ubiquiti, which is actually a really strange device. It can look at your CCTV cameras and apply AI to those cameras, which can do things like speech recognition, facial recognition, and license plate recognition. I've only recently put this in the rack and had a short amount of time with it, so let us know if you want me to do a deeper dive on what this thing can actually do, because it's quite an expensive bit of kit. 
Last and probably least, this thing's called the RPS, or the Redundant Power Supply. It simply keeps things running in case of a power supply failure, or a power outage, or anything to do with power, this thing's basically got your back to keep the network up and running. Now for the AV side of things. My goal with this was to make this really simple. So you've got a bunch of sources and a bunch of TVs. And I want to be able to put any of these sources on any of the TVs around the house. To be honest, a lot of this side is just source devices. We've got the PS5, Xbox One, 360, an old 1080p Apple TV, as well as hidden away at the top, this awesome little mini PC from Geekon. There's barely any power draw from this thing whilst it's sat in idle displaying my CCTV cameras but it's actually a bit of a sleeper. It's got a 13th gen i9 with 32 gigs of RAM and a 1 terabyte SSD inside of it. I haven't had chance to do much gaming on it myself but I've seen people online actually running cyberpunk at 30 FPS on this little mini PC. Like this thing is no joke. And as usual the links to all of this stuff I'll put down there in the description. Tying all of this together is the old school Denon X2500, along with a 4K HDMI splitter. And that's how I'm able to choose any input from the rack to display it on any TV around the house. You wanna fire up the 360 and rip some Guitar Hero on the cinema display? Well, you can do that. You wanna have the football or some TV on in the kitchen or stream something? You can do that. It's basically all possible because of this amp. They have a bunch of HDMI inputs on the back and a couple of outputs. So you connect all your source devices into the amplifier and then you can choose what source you want to display on the TVs using the amp. With a setup like this, you can save yourself money on cable subscriptions because big cable companies usually charge you extra if you want to watch their service in multiple rooms in the house. Well, with a setup like this, you can just get one cable box and put it on whatever TV you want. No extra monthly subscriptions needed. Back to that mini PC though, because this thing is connected into the AV receiver so it can display on the TVs, but there's also a USB-C cable that goes up into the loft and it serves quite a specific purpose. In the loft, it connects to the Ugreen Revo Pro, the sponsor of this video, because I'd like to use this mini PC in the kitchen as well. But the problem is the wireless mouse and keyboard that I've got don't reach through into the home lab when they're in the kitchen. But if the receiver is plugged into the dock, which is in the loft, it works absolutely fine, which is sick. It goes a step further though. The Revo dock has a 4K60 HDMI output on the back. So using these really cheap 1080p HDMI senders that I found off Amazon, I can actually display my CCTV cameras on this small display in the kitchen. Using a portable USB-C powered screen for something like this is really beneficial because it's powered via USB-C, its power draw is very minimal. And considering this display stays on 24 seven displaying the cameras, it's important that it doesn't take loads of electricity to run it. We're actually using the Ugreen Nexo Pro 65 watt ultra thin charger behind all of this to get it all powered up. This charger powers the wireless HDMI receiver and the monitor together. It has a mixture of USB-A and C ports and can deliver 65 watts, which is way more power than what we need right here. It's currently 21% off the charger and 30% off the Revo dock, so I'll put all the links in the description. And thanks to Ugreen for sponsoring this portion of the video. As far as some other cosmetic things within the actual home lab itself, I'm using rack studs to mount all of the gear within the rack. I think they do look better than screws, but obviously have the added advantage that you don't actually need a screwdriver. You can just tighten them with your thumb. And I hid all of the cables inside of these really inexpensive cable sheaths off Amazon. So there's all of the Cat 6A runs that go to the cameras and access points and TVs on the right hand side. And then the umbilical comes down from the ceiling and this houses all of the HDMI runs to the TVs and a few speaker cables for the speakers around the house. Now, last but not least, power. I told you guys we would talk about this. Now having a setup like this obviously sucks back a lot of power and I'm 
conscious about that. So basically in the middle, I installed two off the shelf solar batteries, one from Anker and one from EcoFlow. And this gives me a total of 2.5 kilowatt hours of usable storage. And tied to some solar panels on a sunny day here in the UK, I can actually generate more power than this whole entire room is actually using. So this whole entire room is basically being powered by a blazing rock in the sky. So to be honest, I didn't think this grand total would be this much money but i do want to say a lot of this stuff has been sent to us by companies that have been in touch like ubiquity you guys know i've been the fan of these guys for the longest time and a lot of this stuff here is gifted but it's interesting to see what this room costs to put together anyway guys i hope you've enjoyed this deeper dive into my home lab at home if you want to see a bit more of a behind the scenes of me actually putting this together i've made a couple of vlogs over the last few weeks on this they're on my vlog channel i'll put the links in the description anyway I hope you've enjoyed. My name's been Alex. This has been Techflow, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.